remember when we did Bohr diagrams for our elements? To do the Bohr diagram for phosphorus, first we need to figure out how many electrons it has. Phosphorus has 15. And so the first energy level can hold two. The second energy level, we put eight. And we have five more. And so that's the Bohr diagram for phosphorus. Remember, it has five valence electrons. I'm going to pause the video and draw the Bohr diagram for nitrogen. Restart when you have your answer. You should have gotten that nitrogen has seven electrons, so two in the first and five in the second energy level. I'm going to do oxygen. Restart when you're done. Oxygen has eight electrons, two and six. Another way that we could represent electrons was a Lewis dot diagram. A Lewis dot diagram places the valence electrons around the element symbols. So first, we have to figure out how many valence electrons magnesium has. Magnesium's here, so it has two valence electrons. And so to draw the Lewis dot diagram, you draw the symbol and you put your two dots. To draw the Lewis dot diagram for phosphorus, first we find it. It has five valence electrons. So when filling our Lewis dot diagram, the first two get paired up, and then you put one per side. So that's our Lewis dot diagram for phosphorus. I'm going to draw the Lewis dot diagram for nitrogen and oxygen. Restart when you're done. Nitrogen also has five valence electrons. And oxygen has six. So nitrogen should look the same as phosphorus. And oxygen should have six, so one more. You could have paired up any side that you wanted. As long as two sides are paired, two are unpaired. So the electrons are distributed around the nucleus of the atom in specific ways. The first energy level holds two electrons. The second energy level can hold eight electrons. The third energy level can actually hold 18 electrons. And the fourth energy level can hold up to 32 electrons. To figure out how many electrons an energy level can hold, you use the equation 2n squared, where n is the energy level. So if we're looking at the third energy level, It'd be 3 squared, which is 9, times 2, which gives you 18. So how many electrons could the seventh energy level hold? I'm going to pause the video and restart when you have your answer. Seven squared is 49 times 2 is 98. I'm going to pause the video and restart when you have your answer. <laughs> 11 squared is 121 times 2 is 242. Each of those energy levels are then subdivided into sublevels. The first energy level has one sublevel, which is represented S, and that's a lowercase s. 
The second energy level has two sublevels, S and P. The third energy level has three sublevels, S, P, and D. The fourth has four, S, P, D, and F. And the fifth would have five, S, P, D, F, and G. We currently do not have enough elements for the G to have any electrons, but that would be the next one. Each sublevel can then be subdivided into orbitals. Each orbital can hold two electrons. Each sublevel has a different shape. The S sublevel is spherical in shape. And as N increases, remember that N is the energy level. As the energy level increases, the atom gets larger. Nodes, as you can see from the picture, are areas of zero probability of finding an electron. Remember that an S orbital can hold at most two electrons. S orbitals can hold at most two electrons, which means there must only be one orbital for S. P orbitals are dumbbell in shape, and they're oriented around the X, Y, and Z axes. And P orbitals can hold six electrons because there's three orbitals on the X, Y, and Z axes. The D orbital is clover shape, and D orbitals can hold 10 electrons because there's five orbitals. And finally, the F orbital can hold 14 electrons because there's seven orbitals. And the F orbital just has a complex shape, as you can see. Try to think of good chemistry, pun? All the good ones are gone! Oh, ho, 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 ho,